off, you're on. <laughs> now we are. <laughs> I love the ones where we're all looking down and then we know we're on and we start smiling. <laughs> it's Monday morning. Woo! I'm so excited. I love oh, Mondays. I love Fridays. <laughs> so drop it down if you love a Friday. If you love a good Friday. <laughs> yeah. I just like Mondays represent that fresh start. You know, it's like, okay, get everyone into place. We had fun this weekend. Now yeah. it's time to kind of get into back to a routine and do more of what matters. Woo! Right? So it is April 23rd today, you guys, and we are so excited. Hey, by the way, this is She's Velvet Steel. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Just drop a little comment in um, the comments. Yeah, drop a comment in the comments. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but just give a little hashtag if you're watching the replay. Just hashtag replay. Um, and let us know where you're joining us from. Are you in sunny California? Um, we have two split weather systems in Montana right now. I'm enjoying sunshine here in the western part. And... Poor Katie and Cece just give a some like snow. Yeah, rain or snow, snow or whatever snow. it's trying to do. I don't know. <laughs> so let us know where you're joining from. We're so excited to be with you guys. So Reagan is joining us from California, gorgeous California, Huntington Beautiful. Beach, right? Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. And then of course, um, Katie and Cece are in Billings. I'm in Missoula. You, you guys, we're so excited to be with you. Um, you real quick, no. what was that? Can you see it snowing or no? Yes. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, okay. That's all. I'm just saying that's why that's why I have my hat back on because I was that's, like, nope. that's called Montana population control right there. Okay. <laughs> also birth control. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, we're so excited because in the month of April, we actually started a webinar at the beginning of April called do more of what matters. And you guys, there are three sections to this webinar. There's three separate webinars. They're about 30 minutes long and they purposely walk you through how to do more of what matters because we know because of all of our followers, because of all of our friends, because of all of our sisters and cousins and aunts and all the women out there um, for generations, we get bogged down. What do we do? And how often do we do it? And I'm doing too much and I'm drowning and I'm not effective at anything. And I'm doing a lot, but none of it well. Um, and Stop it, Reagan. It's not. It was, my, it was my. It's my own personal webinar they gave to me that I'm just sharing with the world. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just. It's the constant. We want balance. Well, we yeah. bust the myth of balance for you. We bust the myth of multitasking. We bust the myth that there's one thing that you're supposed to be doing. Um, and so we want to share that with you guys. And I'm telling you, the people that get into it, they apply those things. It's been really neat to see um, how that changes their lives. It's just the slightest little shift in thinking, in priorities, in how we spend our time. So yeah. that is being kept open for the entire month of April. So it's not too late to get in. We'll yeah. put the link in the comments. Um, so make sure you guys check that out for sure. Um, but today, so excited, Cece is wrapping up her three-part hope series with us. Yeah. And we realized through doing more of what matters that um, when you do put your head on your pillow at night and you feel ineffective and you feel like you've done nothing well, you're not feeling very hopeful. Mm -mm. And when we don't feel hopeful, we continue to make bad choices. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Cece, take us there. Give us some hope, girlfriend, in that snowy weather. And I know. I know. <laughs> um, so first, if you get to do the uh, Doing What Matters webinar it's three parts like jen was saying the first part is jamie helping us find our sweet spot our passions the second part i get to handle soul care which is a, a passion of mine and jen it gives us these great um, keystone habits and and real practical ways to get those two things done so um just if you are new to us it's nine dollars it's it's three dollars for each webinar basically just pays for us to be able to broadcast um, and so we would love to have you there and please comment and give us feedback because we learn from you guys. So absolutely. Yeah, so this is part three of hope. Um, the first part was about being fully known by God that when we're fully known by those around us, uh, we're fully loved, we're fully known, our, our uh, 
ugly parts, our insecure parts, our sassy ways. Um, but God knows all of those ways. I know nobody on here is sassy, just so you know. I was just saying that a minute ago. Like one of my kids was ask, acting sassy and I was like, I don't know where you got it from because I'm shy. <laughs> I just love how we can do that. Hollywood Squares. <laughs> <laughs> we're all rapping okay <laughs> so, uh, so um anyway it was about being fully known and then hope part two we it was kind of i said i'm bringing a steak dinner of suffering because um really so often the platform for hoping is that we we look back and we see the suffering that we made it through by the grace of God and by those around us that that jump into deep waters with us. And of course, he never leaves us nor forsake us. So it seems odd to talk about hope um, in the face of suffering, but it's, it's a daily thing. Um, life will always have the greatest of um, love moments so much juxtaposed with some of the harshest moments of our life. It is just the way of life until we get to heaven. And so today um, I have less commentary and, and more of the word just to sort of bathe you in God's word. And one of my favorite Bible teachers, John Corson, he always says, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. And so that's what I have for, for you today um, in Hope Part 3 um, called View with Action. Guys, um, first I want to say thank you for all of those that participated. I did that shout out on my page to say, what does hope mean to you? And you know, these through lines, I read through all of them a few times, took notes on them. So thank you. Uh, but they all involved these same components. You all relayed the same thing in a way. You said things like an expectation for good things to happen, anticipation. So you're looking forward to something good happening. Hope meant that to you. View, um, night goggles, Jamie said. Um, Jen, that no matter what, um, God has me. So that's a view. Um, um, uh, Katie said, no matter how dark it gets, God is still light in that darkness. And such great things about the glass being half full and um, trusting in God no matter what. So all of that was view related. And so that's what I have for you today. So I listened to you, and um, but I just want to thank you. But before I get to our three parts today, I want to back up a moment because I also got messages from some of you that were, Cece, I'm drowning and I have zero hope. And I'm a single mama and work is very difficult for me and I'm not getting along with anyone in the office and, but I need the money. That was one of the comments and other people just saying, my family is split up. It's so hard for me to have hope. And so we're gonna back up a little bit to respond to you to say, thank you for sharing. And I did pray for you and I will continue to pray for you. But I've been living in James, in the book of James. So one, I'm gonna back up just a little bit before we move forward because James 1 relays, relates to last week where we looked at uh, 1 Peter 1, 7, where um, Peter's talking about being refined through hard times. And James hits it well. And some of you will love this. Um, it's James chapter one, and I'm gonna start in verse two. Consider it pure joy. Um, and this is a hard one for us to hear sometimes, but I think once I um, parallel it with the life of Jesus, I think it, I think we'll understand it. I know I did um, when I searched out this word. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And we hit perseverance really well last week in Hope Part 2. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So my um, counsel, my words of hope for our gals that are suffering right now that even reached out to us this week is um, God is with you and he has wisdom for you and lean into him and he is completing the work of maturing you and me and all of us here. That's the work that he's doing. And um, in the middle of it, it's so hard to have joy. But when I search that word, I love to do a Bible search and say, where, where's every other place that that word is found in the word? Like, I love to do that. 
And I, and I, I thought, I bet you it's in Hebrews in terms of Jesus. And there I found it. And so listen to Hebrews 12 too, because Jesus is with you in that suffering girls. So with you. And he considered it pure joy as well. He's our role model. So we got to go there. So Hebrews 12 two says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. That's our part the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Can I just stop and say that when you don't have faith in those rough times, this is like a life motto for me. Thank Jesus that you perfect my faith. Thanks God that you pioneered and you authored my faith, it says in another version, um, and that you're perfecting my faith. Thanks God that that mantle lies first and foremost on you, that you thought up faith that you thought you thought of this relationship between you and I. Thanks, God, that I put my will towards it, but it starts with you. And then you fill it in all the way. So if you're lacking faith, a lot of times I'll just say, gosh, I just don't have much faith in this, but it's so good, God, that you're the perfecter of my faith. Right. So I lean back into the source of that faith. The verse goes on to say, for the joy set before him, that is the same word used in the word, the same joy that James, his brother that grew up with him in the household, Mary's other son, um, uses in the book of James when he asks us to consider pure joy when we're going through trials. It's the same word used for the joy set before him, meaning Jesus, listen, he endured the cross. So when the word asks us to consider it joy for our trials, do you know that it's a forward view that it, that it's asking, like, consider it joy because this is not it. This right. is not the end game. It wasn't Jesus's end game to suffer on the cross. That was not, not even his, it was a means to get to the end game of grace and forgiveness and salvation for all generations, all people of all time. And then the best part, because it's still to come ending with him for an eternity. Right? So I'm not asking you to like, Woo! I love this trial. I love that it's hard to go to work every day. I love that I just ran out of money, like joy, 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 down in my heart. That's not even reality. I, I, Jesus was not going up to Golgotha, like, yeah, woo! Right? He was just holding on to the Father. And that's the joy set before him. And that is what, that, that's the joy that James is talking about. Because I've heard people say, forget it. I can't have joy in this. Again, perfecter of your faith, lean into him because he did it first and for all people. So it says he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's our end game. And so my three things that I have to just going to bring it right through the word. I'm going to read to you out of the Bible today. This is just story time. And I'm going to take you to these five or six or seven verses. We'll see what our time allows. And I'm going to tell you why um, the view that we can have in our trial can be so joyful because we backfill, right? So these verses are going to tell us where we're headed. And then we can backfill with, okay, I can endure this now, knowing that this is just a season. Do you know that life on earth is just a season? Mm -hmm. It's not our forever. And once you can view this whole life called living on this earth as a season, then all those days of awkward, moments of awkward, moments of, oh, I hated going through that. That was just so, uh, right? If our view is that this is not the end game, then all of those things have a different perspective and view to them, every last one of them, from the smallest to the biggest. And we covered some of the biggies last week, losing loved ones. Uh, sooner than we wanted to, even those with the view that we're going to see them again, right? Changes everything, changes everything. And it should, Tim Keller says, um, when you walk with Jesus and you choose him, and some of you watching this, maybe have, you're still deciding, but Tim Keller says, again, one of my other favorite Bible teachers, when you choose Jesus, everything about your life changes and nothing can stay the same. Nothing can stay the same. Because it's everything, because he's everything. He's not just a path, he's the path. So fun. I get so excited. Can you tell? I sat down today so that I didn't move too much like I did last week. I was sort of doing jumping jacks. Okay. Thriller. No, I'm not going to do any Michael Jackson. Okay, heaven verses. Hebrews 13, 14, just going to start 
here's the story time about um, heaven. And uh, it's a story that's real. Hebrews 13, 14. For here, we do not have an enduring city. That's right here, right now. But we are looking for the city that is to come. No clouds, no harps, no boredom. Heaven is for real and heaven is full. And we reign with Jesus and we have all those giftings that we have here are like on fire in heaven, right? Relationship without sin. What the heck? Can't wait. Okay, I'll try not to derail. Next one. Second Corinthians 5, 1 Corinthians 5.1. This one I like because it's about our new bodies. Hey, gosh, so much I could say there, but let's not talk to women. Let's not. Just, that's another coffee talk. That's another coffee talk we could spend on. <laughs> Awaiting our new body is the title. Second Corinthians 5, 1. For we know that if the earthly tent, that's what I'm wearing today. Um, um, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. It's going to get better. I always tell my kids, my youngest was asking, I was like, it's like always being an Avenger. And he's like, nice. Okay. So, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just always like waking up an Avenger. Yeah. And no bad guys. I don't know. Okay. Next. Uh, first John two seventeen, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever like in that one, like I get to live with these girls forever. Like right here, we can do coffee tag in heaven. Sure. <laughs> we'll have Jesus on. <laughs> I know. I have, so, don't they, I have so many plans for heaven. I'm not even kidding. I'm like, I always say, if I don't make it to Israel here, it'll be a lot better in heaven. But that's again, another coffee talk. Hebrews eleven sixteen. Instead, okay, so let me just, a uh, little backstory. So Hebrews 11 is sort of the chapter of all the heroes that have gone before us, like Uriah, um, Bathsheba's husband. Gosh, I, I point him out because that guy didn't get a good deal, but um, he's with Jesus now and it all worked out and he's with David now. So Old Testament, 2 Samuel, read it for yourself. But Hebrews 11, 16, all the heroes um, in Hebrews 11, this is who um, the author is talking about. Instead, they were longing for a better country, like we are. Okay? We get to be put in there, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I'm liking it. No taxes, by the way. Okay. Revelation 21, 4. And a lot of you know this one, and I see this on a lot of Facebook posts. It's a good one. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Makes me cry. Mm -hmm. So good. For the old order of things has passed away. Gosh, does your, my heart suffers when people suffer. Right. So when I read that, I'm just like, woo. You've heard me say this before. I'm always like, I'm not going to miss that. I'm not going to miss that a child gets abused. I'm just not going to miss it. It's gone, gone forever. Gone like Donkey Kong, like my kids say. John, <laughs> John 14, 1 to 4. Um, I just did. And then I'm going to drop the last two because I want to get on to our last point of um, view with action. Let me just say that um, hope is view and hope is action. And um, as we end this, this three-part series, I want to say that view is everything how I view myself, how I view God, how I view these girls, how I view you as you contact us, there will be hope between you and I. There'll be hope in our texts, in our conversations, in our future together, if our view of each other is correct and lined up with God. If I view God and how much he loves you, how you are made in his image, and whether I understand you, whether we'll ever meet face to face, whether you're at the 30,000 feet mark and we're, we never have coffee together, but I watch your teaching or I love a post that you do. My job is to assume the best about you. That's my job. And, and that is for me where hope begins and ends. Like the expectation that you all talked about is absolutely in the in in the minutia so important my expectation of running into katie at church is a big deal 
like my expectation of uh, coming coffee talks or what God has for each of these girls, my expectation of Reagan becoming a homeschool mom, like what I, and we say to her about that. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but I'm hopeful. I'm so hopeful for Reagan, right? So when somebody comes to you with a new thing, assume the best that God's in it because he loves them. Right. And, and he'll handle any of the stuff that we all have to face about ourselves. Listen, that's going to happen. If you read God's word, it's right. going down. And so we don't need to check each other's work like that. We get to be, you know, passing on hope is what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. my last two verses are Galatians where it has the fruit of the spirit. And really the fruit of the spirit is love. It says a singular verb. And then the, the rolling out of love happens in these ways. It's Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Do you just love a faithful person? Do you just love a faithful person? It doesn't mean they can always go all the way with you. It doesn't mean that you won't be like Paul and Barnabas and go in separate directions, figure out the mark thing and come back, right? It doesn't mean that. But it means that you're faithfully praying for them and loving them, whether you talk to them or not. That's mm. who I want to be. I want people to know, Cece would love this. Yeah, I would because you're there and I love you. I don't even have to understand it, right? Um, gentleness, it says, and self-control. That's a big one. That's a big one. Someday I'd love to just do a teaching on words and women. I'm going to pump you up. I'm going to talk about how well you do with those words. There might be some cautions too. I'm just saying, but um, gentleness and self-control against such things. <clears throat> there is no law for me. This is the soil of hope. When, when I'm in these and um, you know, first John says, God is love. When I'm with him in his word, when I take one verse like this one and meditate it, just think through the day, like, how's my kindness going? What's my gentleness level today? How am I in self-control? Not, not listen, not putting a bunch of like um, to do's on myself, but more just little reminders, like hmm, maybe wait on that response, wait on that response. Right. And I'm going to finish with this Colossians 315 is our last verse of the day. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. I can hope and you can hope when the peace of Christ is ruling me. More specifically, my thought life. Right. If mm -hmm. his peace is on me, which only comes through knowing him, there is not another way. You can do it on your phone. You can listen to it in your ear on the version app. Craig Rochelle's church, love them. You can pull like, Pastor Levi Lesko, which we all do, or the other Bible teachers, you do it, but get the word in you. It doesn't matter how you do it. I, I, you know, some people say, oh, computer. Yeah, do it. I live on the Bible on my computer. Do whatever it takes while you're heading to your Orange Theory class, like Jen, just pop in the book of Col Colossians. Now her soul is vibrant, and then she's going to go, you know, knock it dead, which I'm not going, but she's going. So good job, Jen. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. She's inspiring me because we have an orange theory here too. She is my hope that I could do it. So thank you, Jen. You so let that peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. Mm. Gosh, please love the body. Right. I'm going to just tell you, just candidly, love the parts that are so different than yours. Just celebrate them because you couldn't do it. Right. And love the parts that are very similar to you and fill in like a transparency, overlay each other. We always say, you know, I always say, we all say now, fade to black. Like, let that person come up that has your same gifting. Man, we got to let that peace rule in the body. In the body. We're not meant to do this alone. Um, and be thankful. And Paul ends with that. And I, if I'm grouchy and grumpy about something going on, um, hope does not have a place to land. Right. If, I'm, if I'm thankful, yeah, totally has a place to land. And so thanks for doing three parts of hope with us. And Reagan, can I throw it to you and just ask you hope for you or a time of hope or any thoughts, girl? dark days with four kids. 
<laughs> my hope is heaven right now, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting my own house. I told my kids to be in houses around me. I like him close, but not that close. Yeah. No, honestly, what's been on my mind this entire week, and I feel like you even touched it. Yeah. When we talked about that, do of more what matters, I am with our hope series. And I felt like I was out running, you know, not because yeah. I like to, but because I need to. And yeah. I just literally felt like God spoke to me and said, you know, just even change it said, think about more of what matters. Like, is it if you just do more what matters? Like start thinking mm-hmm. about more of what matters. And you even hit it there. And I feel like for me, I've really just started and, and I was listening to a podcast at the same time. And he talked about like the Israelites and how they, there was a moment that God was kind of punishing them because they stopped being thankful. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, man, just, it takes effort to adjust more my mindset more than anything else. I mean, yes, I want to be more organized. I want to do that, but it's like, you can do all that. And then your mind is still focused and still thinking about the wrong things. Totally. Like we, we're so caught up in whatever, like whether we feel like, Oh, I'm just drowning with the stuff that's going on or decisions to be made or, you know, even with my husband, it's like, wow, I could think about, I don't know why he says his coffee cup next to the sink when we've got a dishwasher. I don't know. I don't know why I could be thinking about that. Or instead I could be thinking about like, I love that he always kisses me before he leaves Aww. and says, but that we wash my coffee cup. He doesn't say that, but I'm staring at it while he's kissing me. And I'm like, okay, let me focus on you. So I just, so I, I don't know. I just feel like God's really like gearing it in for me of just let's start like, and we say it's simple and small because what we're thinking about, but that's, it's like you talked with the hope. It totally changes your mindset mm. because now we're so focused on this earthly world, this things that we have, what isn't, and isn't going on. And I mean, for me, so like it's not an actual story, but I just feel like lately I've been, you know, it says renewing your hope. And I feel like I'm doing that because mm. I, I, I'm mentally yeah. making a decision to think be thankful and just think differently. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to think about all my laundry that's still lying around. I'm not, yeah. I'm going to think about what does matter and what <gasps> is it. I love it. So love it. yeah. Hey, Megan, do you know that what you focus on grows? Ab- absolutely. Go absolutely. Focus on the laundry. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so I've got to quit focusing on my belly, man. It is growing. It's not a baby in there. <laughs> That's why we only do the neck up, ladies. We're truly, <laughs> we just like keeping it babies. All right. I, now I, I find this like, I don't even know if Katie, I feel like you're muted this entire time because I see you laughing and I hear no sound. Are you right. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. What about you? All right. Well, I, I'm just really hit by like, hope is what your view is. And then like what your action steps are. Cause for the longest time, I felt like my life was defined by some of the people around me or because of how they feel or because of what they do or because of, Mm um, and I just think um, when you hold on to the father, like you said, Mm. and you just, Okay. you know, do your thing with him. It's just going to give a whole different perspective of the hope that's there. Yeah. Um, and, and everybody else is going to be doing their own thing and let them and love them and support yeah. them and, and do your thing. Like just, yeah. Cling to the father. And yeah, that's what's really been hope for me. It's not, it's not blaming somebody else or if, if they did this, my life would be so much better. Or if, you know, it's just, no, it's, it's you and God and get in community with others and your hope's going to skyrocket. I promise. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, well, we got to wrap it up, but I do want to share, you know, Cece had asked us this week, like, do you guys have a personal story of hope? And, um, Part of me didn't know, if, you know, there's so many different stories, but for me, hope is such a battle because if the enemy can keep you from having hope, then everything changes. Your choices change, your view changes, what you focus on changes, how you parent changes, how you love your husband changes. 
like how, what kind of neighbor you are. Like if you have no hope, I was going through pictures. Um, there's so many things you you said, CC, but I was going through pictures and I, there was a day two years ago that I walked outside of my garage and I literally took a picture with my cell phone. The car in the garage had a flat tire, like flat to the concrete. Mm. The car outside of the garage had a flat tire. The garage door, my husband was in a hurry and was leaving without the garage door up. The garage door was completely bent and broken and we couldn't get it up and we couldn't get cars out of the, out of the, um, anyway, the driveway or the garage. And then I started my car, the only car that was gonna work and the gas light was on. And I remember taking pictures of all of these things because this is what I came out to, but then inside my house, and it's a big long story and I won't share all of it, but my husband had had this massive surgery where he actually had a prophylactic surgery and removed, we removed his stomach and it was for hope because he had a, a really high percentage of getting this stomach cancer anyway, but the re the recovery was so difficult, so difficult that I lost hope that I would ever have my husband back. And that's, you know, the, the husband that I married, the, the strong athletic, um, yeah. rock, you know, just he was gone. He was yeah. weak. He was tired. He couldn't digest his food. His, mm. um, he was suicidal. Mm. Um, I mean, it was just, yeah. One thing after another. I know we're all crying, Jen, you take your time, girl. I, I have nowhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, to see the flat tires and to see the empty gas tank and to see all that was like, Oh man. And you feel the darkness come in and you feel that lack of hope come in. Mm -hmm. And I just, I cling to God's word in moments like that. Well, in all moments, good moments too. But just to know that you guys that, and that's why Cece, I said like, there's never a situation that is too far gone for God. Yeah. And isn't it so easy to think like it's done. Like my um, life as I know it is over. And it's a grieving process. So I, so I really feel like anybody that's in a grieving process, whether you've, you're grieving the loss of a loved one or the loss of what you thought was going to be, yes. whether it's, that's you know, huge. yeah, you thought your marriage was going to be a certain way, or you thought your child was going to turn out a certain way, or you thought you were going to have children and you didn't, and you thought you were going to get married and you didn't, or you aren't. And, you know, grief is applied to so many different things. So I feel like grief and hope and love is just all like this big old matzo ball of Christ is at the center of that. And everything you said this morning, Cece, is um, we we have to help each other not lose hope because we immediately operate in that scarcity mindset with that empty gaslight, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of just like, okay, what else is going to happen? Oh, red light. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you know, you know, everything that happens is now just salt on that open wound when you don't have hope. Yes, yes, yes. And um, God is just, I remember falling to my knees and being like, this is it. Like you've stripped everything from me. That's familiar mm. to start a new chapter, but hope is where that chapter started. Yeah. You yeah. know, that little ray of sunshine that kind of <laughs> peeks through the darkness of like, okay, just almost like a little kid, like, don't let go of that light. Just, just <laughs> don't leave me. As long as I have that, I don't care how many cars are broken down and you know, the lack of food and lack of whatever, you know, we'll every day we'll get through it. So anyway, hope is just massive, but I had a, um, a mentor of mine that used the term calm delight. Mm. And it made me think of that CC, when you said like, when I wasn't like, yes, flat tire. Yes. My husband's no. sick again. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Like trials mm -hmm. are great. I'm <clears throat> right. no, but mm. hope gives you that calm delight. Mm -hmm. And it's a quiet mm -hmm. confidence in knowing that he's got you. He there's, does. there's nothing too far gone. Um, that's beyond his redemption. Right. Yeah. 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 And so Jen, just using you as an example before you close this. So your view now back to that day and back to that season with your sweet husband, right? your, your view of that, Jen, is why you can, like your hope message is solid girl for us, right? It's solid for everybody. And I just want to say that like, cause right now somebody has that walk out and take a picture day of everything a mess right now. That's your right. day. This is not, 
Jen's day today, but she lived a ton of those days, one after another. And so listen, it's coming. The hope is coming. And I just, I, it, it, she's so solid and she's, she's teaching us right now because she lived it where God did not forsake her. And don't forget that Jesus wept in the word before he raised Lazarus from the dead. Why the heck did Jesus cry? Because it was sad. Right. So our, the son of God cried, even knowing that he had the ability to, to bring the dead back to life. He right. still took time to grieve. So I'm just putting a period at the end of her sentence that he had to grieve. Right. We have to grieve mm. and let the father in there. Don't skip that step. And right. don't think it means that you're not godly or you're not trusting God. Jesus cried before he raised Lazarus. It's right. so important that we see all of those vignettes in the word. It's yeah. so true. And Cece, I, I remember Jamie told me, you got to feel it to heal it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so true. Um, so like, you can't you know, skip it. Your week last week, it's like, feel it. Like, don't ignore yeah. it. Embrace yeah. it. You know, mm -hmm. just like, this mm -hmm. is what it is. Um, and how many people do live in that constantly, yeah. but there is always this hope message. So if you're hearing that and you are having that day, go yeah. back and listen to the first hope message, which was on April. Ugh, maybe you guys can throw out the dates for me two um, weeks ago from today. Yeah. yeah. Two, the ninth, April 9th, listen to the first hope message, coffee talk on April 9th, listen to the one last week on the 16th and rewind today and listen to Cece's. Um, just God speaking through her because that is where hope is. And as long as you have that little glimmer, he will give you that calm delight. And it's, it's a gift. It's such a gift. So, okay, you guys, um, that's next, it. We're going to end on that. Week, and next week, social media, Jen, do you want to just, just yes, so let them know. social media. In fact, I'm going to do a little poll today, but let's do a poll here on She's Velvet Steel. I don't want to totally digress from the hope, but yeah. I want to know what are your biggest struggles with your children and social media and electronics. It kind of um, combines and overlaps a little bit, mm -hmm. but so tell me what is um, maybe your top two biggest struggles with those. I talked to my 14 year old this morning. I said, can I interview you? Mm -hmm. And can we have a candid conversation from your point of view? Um, why I'm so annoying asking you to constantly get off of your phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, let's get the conversation going. So we're going to go there next Monday and I'm really excited about it, but I also want your guys' feedback because, um, there's a lot, well, you could start to lose hope with yeah, it, 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 it. It's absolutely related. And a lot of depression comes from social media, like test yep. upon tests. And so uh, we're rolling right from hope into something that we're dealing with every day now with ourselves and our marriages and our kids that yep. can steal our hope. And so right. it, it's totally connected. Yeah. And the other, and we'll, we're not going to go here today. We'll wrap it up. But the other thing that I was just thinking about CC is addiction and hope. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. it yeah. And, that goes in line with what next week is going to be is yeah. um, it, it really is. It can be an addiction that social media, the electronics, things like that. And when we feel any of us feel like we're addicted to anything, alcohol, drugs, electronics, yeah. yes. exercise, food, yeah. the couch, sex. I mean, there's yeah. any, anything can yeah. become an addiction. Yeah. Um, you will lose hope. Right. I, I'm sure your husband wants you to be addicted to sex, though. That's <laughs> all I can think of is afternoon delight after the calm delight. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Reagan's <laughs> having her unicorn. Maybe, maybe we'll have a problem. <laughs> focus on grows, girl. Okay. Uh, have a great Monday. Great week, everybody. Yeah, yeah, don't forget, we'll put the link for Do More of What Matters. It's not too late. Um, we still have a week left of that. So you guys have a great Monday. Cece, thank you so much yeah, for yeah. taking us there. And thank you yeah. for your heart and the preparation you put into it and just mm -hmm. allowing God to speak through you. You are such a blessing. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Jen, so much. Thanks, guys. Love you guys. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.